Uh, my name is Vanashri. Uh, I am a cryptographer at Owen Labs um, and uh, oh, that got changed. I am an advisor at uh, Horizon and today we are going to talk about NFTs uh, and many people are weirded out by NFTs, right? They say that, oh, what are these images and um, anybody can steal and copy these images? and these are worth millions of dollars, uh, right? They are, we are, they, they are rightfully critical because there is no notion of rarity or exclusivity or non-fungibility anymore. And that's a problem, right? So instead, what we want is to be able to hide these assets in such a way that um, nobody can steal it and only reveal some reference or a metadata of these NFTs. And that's what we are going to talk about, uh, how to hide or privatize assets. And specifically, we are going to talk about this. We will, we will we, firstly, to really drive home the point uh, we will look at all the reasons why uh, NFTs need privacy. And then we will see, okay, so what does privacy really mean for NFTs? We will explore various dimensions of privacy one can think of for NFTs. And then we will see that privatizing NFTs is actually not a trivial problem to solve. You know, you cannot just slap on ZK snarks and call the problem solved. Um, and then we will see that uh, to, to what extent this problem is solved or unsolved. And finally, we will present Paris. It's a protocol. It's a, it's a protocol that provides you the option to add privacy in any of those dimensions. But for this talk, we will only focus on one of those dimensions as far as the protocol is concerned. Okay, so that's what we're going to discuss. Let's begin by seeing why NFTs need privacy. One main reason why NFTs need privacy is because you can realize more meaningful categories of NFTs than just images. Like we discussed, one thing we can do is say you uh, have a video, right? Uh, you can just put out a, a still, a shot, a, a picture inside the video out there and then hide this video. Um, I want to say, in fact, what motivated me to study this problem was an article by, uh, was an article uh, that was related to this problem. That article said that Quentin Tarantino, who is the director of uh, Pulp Fiction, a cult movie, he wanted to sell never seen before scenes of Pulp Fiction uh, as NFTs and he just could, couldn't wrap his head around the fact that he can, he can put these videos out there for the entire public to see and then some ledger is going to say who is going to own it. You know, he just couldn't wrap his head around, you know, okay, I'm giving it to one person but everybody knows, uh, has access to these videos. That doesn't make any sense is what he thought and he, he went on to look for a solution for it. And uh, we will see that as of now, there aren't good solutions. Anyway, so that is one thing. That is one feature you can achieve with uh, privatizing NFTs. And then you can think of exclusive viewership, right? For example, in, uh, if, if you consider the real world, the the masterworks of art, right? They, contrary to the popular belief that masterworks of art are mostly in museums, many masterworks are held by these uh, really high net worth individuals in their private collections and only uh, their friends and families and close circles can view these um, images, the, these, these uh, uh, arts. So, so that's what is, happens in the, re, in the real world. And if you want to replicate that in, in the digital world, 
you need some notion of privacy, right? You cannot put it out in the open. There is some exclusivity. Okay, so and then another um, another uh, feature you can achieve, you can think of is viewership with access control. So um, think of age limit or or people who have already bought some uh, NFT uh, already or uh, some paywall and so on. And um, and finally, you can think, think another category is NFTs that require uh, privacy more inherently, right? For example, if you think about real estate, you don't want the entire world to know all the properties you own, where you live. You don't want the entire world to know all the concerts you're going to, and thereby everybody knows your physical whereabouts, where you are, and so on and so forth, right? So, so these are different categories of uh, categories you can achieve. So you know, just like any uh, any other asset that is of value, you need privacy, right? Probably it is because lack because of the lack of privacy that the only the only real popular mainstream NFTs right now are just images. Maybe be, just because you know you cannot achieve you cannot achieve uh, things that are more meaningful because they inherently need privacy. Okay, so that, that being said, it is not just the features we can achieve given privacy, but also if you don't have privacy for NFTs, then NFTs succumb to very simple and prevalent attacks, such as, you know, of course we saw stealing. You can copy NFTs if you don't have privacy. And another Another uh, kind of attacks is uh, they're called wash trading or shill um, uh, bidding. The idea with shill bidding is that you get your friend to place a really high bid and buy your NFT, thereby artificially inflating uh, the value perception of the NFT. And later, of course, you can, you can pay back your friend off chain. Um, and that's a problem. And if you have privacy and if you're hide, if you're able to hide the bid values, the sale values, maybe you can alleviate this problem. Okay, so, so in summary, privacy is necessary for NFTs, not just because you can achieve a lot more, but also because if you don't have privacy, the any sort of NFTs succumb to a wide range of attacks. Okay. Uh, now let's see. Okay, so we argued that we need privacy. Okay, what, what are the different dimensions? What are the different kinds of privacy that make sense for NFTs? Uh, one, of course, we talked about. One is, you know, you hide the asset. You hide the asset. You maybe encrypt that asset, asset, and then there is a secret key. The secret key finally needs to go to the winning bidder, the person who will later own this NFT. And... Um, so that is one dimension of privacy, where you hide the asset itself. And then you can think about various dimensions of privacy in this NFT uh, ec ecosystem. There are users, there are bidders, there are sellers, and there are, and so on, right? Uh, so you can think about seller and bidder an anonymity, um, where, it is, uh, where it becomes important. Um, again, it goes back to what we were saying. You don't want people to know if, if you buy something there, you don't want people to know who bought it, you, the things that you own, and so on. And maybe you want to hide how much money you have in your bidding. Maybe you want to hide how much money you have in your selling. Because people can use that information against you when you're, when, when you're trying to sell something. If you have less money in your wallet, people will think, oh, this is not a very high-profile seller. I don't need to bid very high much instead of really looking at the piece of art or really looking at what they're trying to sell and, and uh, assigning an independent value to that asset. Instead of that, if they, if they correlate that with the money you have, that's not good for artists. That's not good for uh, asset uh, sellers. And then sealed bidding, this is such a, this is such a uh, natural thing in in reality, if anybody is selling, you would of course want to auction it, right? You want to you want to auction it. You want to get the best price possible, and one 
very popular way, there are various ways of auctioning. One very popular, uh, uh, popular way of auctioning is sealed bidding where you, know, you don't know what the other people have bid. If you know what the other people have bid, of course you will you look at the highest bidder and, uh, and you do, just do plus one, why do you want to pay a lot more than the uh, uh, highest of the rest of the bidders, right? So th this is called sealed bidding. And if you want to achieve, realize that on, on the blockchain, you need some notion of privacy. And the, an NFT owner wants his property. Because you know, if someone maybe. sells something, you want to see, okay, the, you want the price to be high. Okay, okay so I'll, I'll pay more, I'll pay more, I'll pay more. Instead, if you reveal that only at the end, Probably the NFT would be sold for the less price. Probably or probably not. You cannot. So there, you're right. I mean, if you, if there are two parallel universes, you never know if you're living in one universe what is going to happen in the other universe. But it is not. But it's not always the case. I think that if you don't have privacy, you'll always get the higher price, right? Um, for example, you can create a. If, if if you see that everybody who has bid, so maybe it's a very high value. Uh, maybe it's a very high value. Imagine it's a very high value NFT, uh, but people, maybe it's a market downturn. I don't know. Maybe people are worried about Super Bowl at the, in that weekend or I don't know. And then let's say every bidder is like bidding like uh, 10 euros or something, uh, 11 euros. Instead, it has to be like a 2,000 euro uh, thing. And then... And then um, when you are looking at every other bidder bidding this way, you'll say that, okay, I'll put 50 euro. I'm, I'm uh, likely, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that people won't come all the way till here. Maybe it, it, people will, this person is likely to just let me have it. You know, you never know the circumstances, right? Um, and I'm not saying that one is better than the other. It's just an option. You know, you, one needs to have the option. Uh, one should not be denied that option, and if one chooses, so be it. If one doesn't choose, so be it. Right. But yeah, you're, you you made a valid point. Um, yeah, let me pause here and ask if there are any questions, or if any comments you want to make. Yeah. We have technicians. You want to see? Yeah. You want to see? Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> we all woke up now, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Edit the video. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. So now, okay. So here is a little bit of math for, for this is not math, but, but this is the core cryptography, right? We are coming to. But, so, like I was saying, it's not a trivial problem to solve. Why can't, okay, let's see. Okay. Zero, you have zero knowledge proofs. Can we solve this problem, right? That's the question, right? What is, the pro what is the promise of z zero knowledge proofs? The promise of zero knowledge proofs is that, um, is that um, you have a computation and you can, you, you, you can compute a certificate that attests to the correctness of this computation in such a way that you can hide certain parts of the computation, right? That's what a zero knowledge proof, uh, what, what a zero knowledge proof helps us do. On the other hand, what we want now is, okay, let's focus on one dimension here, right? The, the first dimension we talked about, which is to hide the, uh, the asset and then um, let uh, people see just me metadata of it. If you want to do something like that, what, what, so this is what uh, zero knowledge proofs allows us to do. And what we want is to be able to encrypt something and then there is a secret key, and you want to give the secret key to. When you are encrypting, you don't even know to what to whom that secret key needs to go. If you know that, you can just encrypt that to that person's public and uh, and put it out there. But you don't know even who the who will bid, who will be the highest bidder, and so on. That is what we want to achieve, and this is what this gives. And really. These two are really, they, they don't match, you know, okay, this is what the problem is and this is what the solution is. This is not, this is a piece for a different puzzle and this is a different puzzle, right? And um, 
in, okay, so let, let me say that in the final protocol, Paris, that I, uh, that I wrote a paper about, we do use zero-knowledge proofs, but it's not like, you know, you just have zero-knowledge proofs and the problem is solved. It's not like that. That's what I'm trying to argue. And then this is one um, tool one can think of. If you're looking at this problem as a cryptographer, you'll, you'll first say, okay, let's try zero-knowledge proofs. Okay, zero-knowledge proofs themselves do not work. Let's try witness encryption. That's a, that's a very natural next thing that'll come to your mind, right? Why? Because witness encryption, what does it do? It, it's an encryption. You're encrypting something. You don't have public key and private key anymore, but you, what you have is a public statement. There is a statement, like a puzzle, and then anybody who knows an answer to this puzzle will be able to decrypt, right? Uh, like, uh, anybody who knows a witness to this statement will be able to decrypt, right? That's witness encryption. Why does that not, okay, so this is what is a, is, is, is a tool that is in our toolbox. Now maybe the following would work. Let's think, right? What if you encrypt the asset using witness encryption and then say that um, here, here is the puzzle. The puzzle is that you will need to know um, the, uh, the, the uh, randomness needed to, the, that was behind the highest bidding transaction, right? Okay, who needs to, who needs to decrypt? The person who is the, winners, uh, who is the highest bidder needs to decrypt. What is the corresponding puzzle? The puzzle is that, okay, so there, there, there are many transactions and this is the highest bidder transaction and you, you should have the secret key corresponding to this highest bidder, bidder transaction. Maybe that might work, right? That's the, that's the first thing one would uh, likely think about. But that doesn't work, why? Because it has some problems. Problems like, I, okay, there is no more uh, blockchain. It's like you're decrypting, it's a local thing. Maybe I will, I won't, Maybe I'm the second highest bidder. When, when decrypting, I will give it only the transactions that are less than my bid, right? And then they'll say, this is the highest bid, and I know what the secret key is, so I need to be able to decrypt it, right? And then it'll, then it'll allow you to decrypt, and then you will do the same thing, and you will also be able to decrypt, and that doesn't solve the problem, right? So witness encryption also doesn't seem to work. And then another thing you want to think about is it's a little far-fetched, not as close in flavor as ZK Snarks and um, witness encryption, but, but let's consider fully homomor homomorphic encryption. What does a fully homomorphic encryption, what does it allow us to do? It allows us to uh, do computation under the hood, right? You, you encrypt something and you make some changes under the hood. Why it might work? Because, okay, so your, your, the goal is that you encrypt something and then put it out there, right? You, you, okay, there is a secret key. You don't know where it'll go. It needs, and I don't want to give everybody, maybe the validators, the secret key. I don't want to give the validators the secret key. I want to give validators something so that they can, they will later take that thing and create encryption of the secret key to the uh, winning bidder, right? But they, need, they, don't, they, they, they shouldn't know what's inside, but somehow they should be able to create an encryption of the, uh, of the secret key, uh, NFT secret key to the uh, winning bidder. Maybe that's when you, you probably will start thinking about fully homomorphic encryption because maybe you, you can encrypt this secret key using uh, fully homomorphic encryption, and then maybe somehow these validators will create inside the hood, will create an encryption uh, under the uh, bidder, under the bidder's uh, public key and send it to the bidder. But you know, the, the problem here is that even if you, uh, the, the inside the secret key, if you, in, if, if again you encrypt it with the uh, winners, the winners public key, everything will still be under the hood. Everything will still be like, you know, uh, there, is, there is something still on top of it. The output of fully homomorphic encryption is still an encryption. It doesn't open up. 
It doesn't open up the output of the functionality that's getting run inside. It doesn't. It, the output of it is encryption of the output of the functionality. And, and uh, a winning bidder doesn't want en uh, some encryption of the output, which is the secret key, it actually wants the secret key so that the winning bidder, she can go and decrypt the uh, NFT and get the NFT, right? So uh, fully homomorphic encryption also doesn't work. Okay. So if I understand correctly, yeah. here the problem is mostly dealing with bidders, right? With, uh, with what? Dealing with, uh, I mean, that you want also to handle the bidding in a private fashion. Right. No, right? Okay, so even if you hide the bit, okay, that's a great point, right? the, the direction. Let's explore it, right? So, okay, so, so there are, you know who the highest bidder is, but you will know, you will not know who the highest bidder is when you're, when, okay, so I'm the, let's say you are the seller and I will be the highest bidder. We all will bid and let's say, uh, okay, let's say he'll be the highest bidder. I won't take the credit. Let's say he will be the highest bidder. But you won't know that he will be the highest bidder when you are minting your NFT, right? Okay, so you're encrypting your NFT. You, let's say everybody later will know bids are all out in the open. Even then you will not know who the highest bidder is when you are minting the NFT. Uh, you will need to encrypt the NFT, the asset, and then there is a secret key for it. What you want is whoever wins the uh, bid, whoever wins the auction, should get the secret key. So how are you going to send him the secret key? Right? With ZK Snorks, how? Maybe there is a solution. I just, I just don't know. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. L like, I mean, yeah, the same way, that's how I also started thinking when, you know, the, it seemed like maybe ZK Snorks should, should solve the problem. Um, yeah, but it seems like you need more than, you need a little bit more than uh, Ziggy Snarks. Okay. Uh, any more comments? Just, you can say any comments or anything you feel like. Or Okay. Uh, state of the art, right? Um, the state of the art, I, I left it blank for a reason, right? Uh, <laughs> there... Uh, there isn't much work in this. There, there, the people have considered this because there is a real uh, product market fit. There is actually not even a push. There is a pull. Quentin Tarantino asked for it. Uh, people are asking for it, right? So we know it's a worthy enough problem to work on, but uh, it's not that... As, as, as I kept thinking about it, I felt that it's not that easy a problem. Like, you know, it's not like even if, I, even if you put a bunch of these things together, does it solve it? Uh, not, not so readily. It, it kind of boils down to the following problem, which is you hide a secret key inside the smart contract so that nobody can see what the secret key is. It, I, I don't know if that is even pos possible. Even if you think about... Uh, obfuscation, even then I, I don't know if that already solves the problem. Um, I don't know. Um, so uh, if, you, if you think about storing the secret key inside the smart contract, if, if that is somehow possible, then, it, then this problem is solved, right? If you, the, the idea will be that, okay, so when you are minting that NF, NFT, you will first encrypt the asset and then keep that secret key hidden inside a smart contract. And, and then the smart contract will see who are the bidders. Okay, this is the winning bidder, and you'll give the winning bidder the secret key, right? That, that'll solve the problem. But we don't know how to hide a secret key inside a, a, a smart contract. And then there's this one project which, which hides secret key inside smart contracts by just putting it inside these uh, uh, secure hardwares the trusted execution environments and so on. Um, the validator, each validator has a trusted execution environment and inside that there is a secret key. But, but they themselves are very critical of this solution. They say that it's a first stab at this problem. Um, and why, why, why they themselves are critical about it? Because 
if you are trying to secure millions of dollars worth of assets with something that can be broken with a couple of millions of dollars, it doesn't make sense, right? Um, okay, so that is the, uh, the state of the art. Um, we are going fast because I, I tend to talk fast. I'll, I'll try to slow down to use the time. Yeah, uh, we are already close to what the, okay, finally, you guys are happy. I, I, I told you stories, but now this is, this is what uh, is the meat of it. So par, uh, Paras, uh, Paras um, like I said, this protocol has, uh, has multiple components. Uh, there are various stages, okay, you're, you're, you're minting, you're uh, putting out in the auction, people are bidding, then there is a bid resolution, and then, then finally the person who wins the bid will be able to decrypt the NFT and get, get it, right? And, and there are various components of privacy you can add to it. For example, people can choose, I want to be anonymous. The seller can choose, I want to be anonymous, um, hiding what the bid is. Um, hiding the NFT and you can choose, okay, so th these are the options you can choose, okay, th this is the subset of options I, I'm interested in and then those, th those parts of the protocol activated, right? But for now, uh, we will only think about one privacy dimension, which is just hiding the NFT, okay? So let's just think about it, right? D does any of you want to want to say what are potential directions before I you know maybe you you have different ideas and spoiled it. I spoiled it. Did you stare at it already? Okay, but it, it doesn't say much. I have some notations. You want to secret sharing? Huh? Secret sharing. Yeah, you you secret share. Yeah, so the protocol uses very so the tools. I didn't use uh, fully homomorphic encryption. I didn't use. Um, uh, witness encryption, but I use ZK Snarks, uh, threshold encryption, and uh, robust secret sharing. Um, so, like you said, it 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 really is a is a natural thing to do. Uh, the secret sharing, uh, where so when you are minting, you you will take the secret key and split it and and secret share it across all the validators. Right? They should later be able to give, give put them together and give it to the winning bidder. So you initially give the secret key to all the validators, you secret share and give it to them, and it's robust. What you, what the secret, the, the, the uh, security property from the secret sharing we need, additional security property from the secret sharing we need is robustness. Robustness in what sense? Uh, if a validator, a malicious validator gives a bad secret, a b bad secret share, you should still be able to uh, combine the secret shares to the right secret, even if parts of them are corrupted. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so that's the initial phase. And then you'll, then you, I, I know you're cryptographers, you'll complete the story in, my, in your minds, but let me just say it. Uh, once the validators get all these secret shares, um, they receive all the bids and then they'll look at, okay, this is the, Winning bidder, they'll take the winning bidder's public key and encrypt all these. Oh, let me use this. Uh, encrypt all. Let's say PKB is the winning bidder's public key. You will encrypt the secret shares of the secret key that encrypted the NFT uh, with the public key of the winning bidder and give it to the winning bidder. The winning bidder will open, will un uh, decrypt and get all these secret shares and the winning bidder will combine these secret shares, get the secret key, and use the secret key to decrypt the, um, decrypt the uh, asset. So this is, uh, this is the life cycle. If you just want uh, privacy where, you're, where, where the goal is just to hide the asset. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's it. Like you know, uh, there there are okay. So I'll pause here, but there is some caveat here. You know, th there are some some weird things that can happen if you do this, just this. I'll let you guys stare at it, think about it, 
or uh, and you know critique it and find maybe poke holes in it what is it if it's just for encrypting the nft but uh, i mean if the validators collude in some way there you go exactly uh, right Maybe maybe two third. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe. Right. Exactly. I I didn't. Right. Yes. Uh, at this point in time, we didn't need verifiable secret sharing. At least okay. the other components that came together. I didn't find the need for it, but maybe you can use verifiable secret sharing and then reduce the need for other components in the protocol. I don't know, but just I haven't thought about using verifiable secret sharing. Okay. Mm -hmm. but going back to what you said, uh, that's like the, 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 the problem because, you know, okay, so these, uh, let's say we are all validators. We all have uh, secret shares of something. And we know that it's worth millions of dollars. At least some of us can go on, on uh, Telegram and create a group and then share and then uh, have that uh, asset, right? Uh, let's say, let's take example of this Quentin Tarantino's video, then we'll get the video. We're not supposed to get the video. We'll get access to the video. We'll be able to decrypt. Um, and this is because of, yeah, you know, this, this, this collusion need not have to ha happen on, on chain. You can create an off chain collusion and uh, uh, do things that you're not supposed to do. Um, there are some ideas I have here on how to, um, uh, how to solve this problem. For example, if you can create, um, there, are, there are multiple options, one option, <laughs> is that um, one option is that maybe you host this encrypted NFT. Okay, the NFT is not, uh, not out in the open, it's encrypted. Where will you keep it? Will you keep it on a, on a on, on Filecoin or something or, or, or um, something else? The solution I was thinking about was um, the company who is going to build this, something like this, can have a hosting service, you know, it has its own hosting service. You host, uh, you, you store the encrypted NFT, and then you create a gateway. What does the gateway do? The gateway, okay, so let's say I'm, I'm the person who is at the gateway. What I will do is I'll run a node. I'll run a node and say that, um, so I'm, I'm part of the consensus protocol, right? I'm, I'm, I'm a node, uh, so I, I will know who won the bid and what is the winning transaction. And let's say all the validators will put a stamp on the winning transaction, right? So maybe it's a threshold signature. You create one signature on the, on the winning transaction and then I'm the gateway, okay? So I will look at the winning transaction. There is a stamp on it and uh, I know that it corresponds to the chain. You know, so it's not like validators went together and also put a stamp on it in, 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 on Telegram. No, that won't work because I'm a node. I will, that, that, that thing needs to correspond to the state of the blockchain. Um, and if it, if it does correspond to the state of the blockchain and there is a stamp on this transaction and you know the secret key corresponding to this transaction, then you're allowed to go in and decrypt the NFT and get the NFT. That's one solution. I don't know if it's uh, if it's the, uh, the 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 perfect solution, the the, the most uh, efficient system-wise, the most efficient solution. But here is one solution. Um, uh, what if the owner has one share of the, the yeah. Share? Maybe that's another solution where Maybe that. Exactly, but uh, yeah, so 
the change in the uh, way the system needs to work there, th that, that's a perfect solution in my mind. The only change in that. Um, Right. The right. You, 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 need, you need like a, 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 a minus right. One. right. 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 You introduce some issues in the code. Right. Right. So, um, okay. So let let's explore this. There are so many interesting things that can happen in the scenario, right? Because, okay. So one change in the system wise, okay. So uh, is, is that that person needs to come online when the sale happens which is not the case in usual marketplaces. But let's say we will live with it because, because we are getting so much more, we are getting privacy. Let's say we will live with it. Um, so you talked about robustness. Um, maybe, you will need, maybe the seller needs to have more shares than what, it has, uh, what she has given away to all the validators, right? To make sure that robustness property uh, is fine. Um, then you'll think, oh, why does it, why, why does this, seller needs to anyway give secret shares. Anyway, she's coming online. Maybe she'll come online and see, okay, these are the bidders. Okay, this is the winning bidder. Here is the secret key. I don't even worry about giving the secret shares to the validators. But maybe it actually makes sense to secret share because, because uh, what is, at least philosophically, right? when things are on blockchain, you don't want to have, there, there shouldn't be, uh, after everything is on the smart contract, there, ha, there shouldn't be a central party making decisions. There is, there are the decision, the, that party shouldn't be able to change, shouldn't change minds, stuff like that, right? If that party can, cannot deny service, for example, if, if, if you know that, okay, I have, I've done the bid and finally you will decide that I'm not going to sell, I'm not going to give you the secret key. Right, um, so maybe a solution where you have given some things in such a way that you're you're held uh, accountable to give the uh, give away the secret key, maybe something like that, um, where you'll have to give some shares. There is a, there are two conflicting conflicting things, right? You'll have to give the secret shares in such a way that they won't be able to you won't be able to get the secret key, but uh, you sh but but uh, the other constraint is that. If you deny giving the secret shares, the winning bidder should still get the secret key. There are two uh, conflicting things. This is probably the reason why I didn't like explore down that path. That's that was kind of a roadblock for me. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a maybe there is a solution and it's a worthy enough solution to to explore. But the option is. Oh, now you're talking about encrypting the bids? No, uh, sorry, the, the sorry, the I didn't shares, know. Okay. Uh, I mean, who ensures that the validator actually, or we trust the validator that we will encrypt uh, the, the, share, the shares with the public key or the, or the winner? We will trust only the, uh, let's say, majority or some, some sort of stuff. Yes. Right. Sorry. Right. Exactly. Robust secret sharing. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Maybe at this point we can pause here and talk a little bit more about this if you want, if you're more interested in this direction or we can discuss, okay, let's say if the bids are all encrypted, right? Then what do you do? Right? Do you guys, do, do you guys have any yeah, ideas? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And that is why I used threshold decryption. So let's say before this whole, before the beginning of this universe, the, the privatizing NFT universe, all the validators will create um, a, a, th a threshold encryption public key and they will have 
the secret key, the secret key shares corresponding to this threshold encryption public key. And then when, okay, now, now we are in the bidding phase, okay? Now we want to hide the bids. What's the goal? Bids are hidden. The validators somehow need to know what is the highest bidder, who is the highest bidder. So that pe other people who are bidding, they don't know. We all don't know that this guy is the highest bidder. But once the validators look at all the, somehow we'll be able to see who the, who the highest bidder is. And for that, one solution, which is in the paper, is, is that uh, you use threshold encryption and say that um, every bidder will encrypt the bid, their bid, using the threshold encryption public key and give it to the validators. What the validators will do, this, okay, so now let's play the role of validators. We are all validators and, the, uh, and we, are, we have all received encrypted bids. Now let's consider just one bid, which is encrypted. What, we will, what every one of us will do is decrypt it. Yeah, I, I know you have completed the solution uh, in your minds, but you, you will decrypt it. What you, 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 won't, you won't be able to completely decrypt because it's threshold decryption. What you have is not the complete secret, she, secret key. You'll have only a secret key share. So what, when, you, when you do that operation, what you get is just, this, uh, just the decryption share of the bid. And later, you'll, we will kind of, you know, OK, so I, this is the decryption share I got for this bid. Look, here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go. And then you will send me, we, we will all send to each other, right? Uh, everyone to everyone. And then we will get, so now finally after this, what will each of us have? We will have the decryption shares for every uh, bit that is encrypted. You'll have all the decryption shares. You'll put all the decryption shares together and get the decryption of it. So you'll have the actual bid. And that happens for every bid. So then, in, in the view of any validator, you'll have all the bids. And then you'll see, OK, what is the highest bid? And then you'll go to the next step. Sorry, but it is, again, like before, cannot collude and learn the value of the bid. It's actually part of the protocol for them to collude and uh, learn the value of the bid. It's, it won't be a problem. No, I mean, they can exploit this information to beat themselves. No? Okay. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, part of the problem. At least, huh, at least um, on chain, you can create a phase. There is a trust component there. Um, I don't know yet how to fully solve it. it if, if, you, if you place that trust that these uh, uh, validators won't collude uh, off chain uh, for this part of the problem, then you can say that you create this, this, uh, you create this phases. You first create a bidding phase. When once all the bidding is done, then all the validators will talk to each other. Will, will do this uh, bid resolution phase. After the bid, uh, Bids are all done. Oh wow! Uh, I thought uh, I was like twenty minutes in. We are fifty minutes in. Uh, great. Thank, thank you for, you yeah, this is it. Five minutes? Yeah. Yeah, this is all I got, you know, this is all I got. But uh, if you have any uh, questions, I'm happy to like, uh, uh, discuss that, that so for, question. For which part of the protocol do you use the CK snap? Uh, I think maybe you said it. Uh, you may want to show off that, hey, my NFT bid for these many millions of dollars, right? People do that and, and people want to show off even that they, that they uh, have bought certain NFTs, right? They want to put, 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 make their profile pic as uh, their uh, NFT image and so on and so forth. So you want to show something off. If you want to show something off, there is a CK snark part of it. Um, plus, Think of uh, Z, uh, not Zcash. Think about ZDXE or um, where you want to hide your transaction. If you want to hide your transaction, for example, right? Um, there, 
you, you can, it's not enough to just um, it's not enough to just encrypt the bid because th when you're bidding it's 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 a value transfer okay let's say you, let's say you're the win winning bidder right okay you have won the bid now uh, there there are changes in the account balances uh, something needs to go away from your uh, account and needs to go uh, go to the seller's account and um, there's already a solution for it, which is ZEXE, the, um, the, the like more general, Zcash, huh? Zcash. Zcash, more general version of Zcash. Okay. Um, most, of, most of the solutions already come from Zcash. We don't need the full power of ZEXE, but still some, some elements of ZEXE. Yeah. That's where, again, in, 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 in that part of the protocol, the ZEXE part of the protocol, again, there is zero knowledge proofs where you're, you're going to say that, okay, the, the part that we are encrypting and the part where you're saying that this value will go to this person, they are all the same. The things, there are two things that you have written here, underneath they are the same, stuff like that. There again, you need zero knowledge proofs. Ah. When you explain the issues of uh, FHE, maybe, yeah. I thought that maybe, maybe, like, maybe uh, we talked about witness encryption, right? Yeah. Which, is, which is a more generic like, version of functional encryption. But maybe if we start thinking about, I haven't thought about it to be honest, but maybe if we start thinking about functional encryption, maybe the, maybe the puzzles, maybe we, we are able to fit the puzzles, maybe we are able to think better about what are the puzzle pieces and how they fit together. I don't know, maybe, yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.